This is Peter Clausey with Investor Intel. There's the little Investor Intel pin. Chris, I think you got one of those last year at the Clean Tech Metal Show when we first met. I certainly did, Peter. How are you? I'm good. We're with Chris Reed from Neo Metals. Last year, Neo Metals had a really interesting story with various components, and we're catching up on those different components. Chris, you have three basic parts to your business, right? Correct. Correct. We've uh, we have a share in uh, the world's second uh, largest producer of uh, lithium concentrates, the Mount, Par Mount Marion project in, in Western Australia. Uh, we're looking to integrate that into lithium hydroxide production. Uh, we've got a lithium battery recycling business and we're commissioning a, a pilot plant up in Montreal this month. Uh, and we have the world's second richest titanium uh, deposit. It, it also has the benefit of... Uh, of having Australia, one of Australia's highest vanadium reserves as well. So an embarrassment of riches. Uh, let's start with the recycling because that's the most interesting to me. What are you doing and what's your time frame for success? Right. So, you know, we, we had a look at the, the lithium battery supply chain uh, because obviously we're in the lithium industry. We had a look at, at, at some of the thematics um, and the one that, that stood out was that, um, that cobalt you know, it's 60% of the cobalt's coming out of the DRC. Um, less than 5% of lithium batteries are recycled. Uh, now, lithium batteries have been around in consumer electronics for uh, for more than a decade. So to have less than 5% uh, be recycled um, basically has somewhere between 60 and 80,000 tonnes of cathode materials being stockpiled annually. Wow. Um, so you, you look at a, a tonne of these lithium cobalt tape batteries, they're 20% by weight cobalt. So more than 10,000, 11,000 US dollars a ton uh, in situ value. Um, we we have uh, an R&D team in our laboratory uh, in Montreal. They've, they've got a very deep background into base metals and a lot of these EV batteries um, have a lot of base metals in them. Uh, so we basically sat down with them, bought them uh, a ton of batteries and said, look, you need to come up with a process that works for us. And look, you know, we didn't know exactly what we're doing. That's why they call it research and development. You know, we blew up a couple of hammer mills, <laughs> get, a lithium get a lithium polymer battery in there and crack that and expose lithium metal and, the, and, the, and the, mill, the mill doesn't last long. So look, we've developed a process to get it safely into solution and then, and then to break uh, the cobalt out. Is it scalable? Um, we did. Oh, look, absolutely. So um, at the moment, we're, we're building a 100 kilo a day pilot plant that will get commissioned later this month uh, in Montreal. So we've run lithium cobaltate batteries. The next step for us has been to run the construction and the, and the, um, uh, the process uh, at the same time to recover um, the cobalt, uh, sorry, the, the copper, the nickel, the lithium yep. out of EV batteries. So we'll run a ton of uh, NCM and a ton of NCA batteries uh, through that, you know, some for battery makers, some for car makers, um, you know, the scoping study on a 10 ton a day, which would be uh, the next scale up, which is which is which is pretty reasonable. I mean, they're only small base metal circuits, uh, really. Yep. Um, so the scoping study we did on that earlier in the year had about a, a capex of about four and a half million and an operating cost of uh, of about four bucks fifty US a pound of cobalt which puts you down the lower end uh, of the curve. Uh, cobalt's um, trading around $30, $31 this week, a pound. So you've got a lot of margin there. Yeah, look, th there is, and we expect that as we recover the uh, the copper, nickel, and the lithium, that the, the economics will actually get better. So, look, we are, we are very excited about that, but it's, you know, we've got a, a disciplined evaluation uh, going through that. So we'll run the pilot, then we'll do an engineering cost study for a 10-ton-a-day plant, we're running the partner and site selection uh, in parallel. Um, the construction period for the 10 ton a day plant is about 42 weeks if it's lithium cobaltate, uh, and it's probably a year um, if it's for NCM slash NCA. And I find that very interesting because I'm very interested in cobalt, and anything we can do to help mitigate the risk of the supply chain out of the Congo is a good thing. So we'll be watching that part yeah. really closely. Excellent. You also have um, uh, vanadium and lithium in deposits in Australia. 
Vanadium is very hot right now together with scandium. So let's hear about that. Yeah, so look, our, our Barambi, Barambi titanium project is the second highest grade titanium project in the world. It has uh, significant vanadium in terms of in terms of a byproduct. We did look at it a number of years ago as uh, uh, as a primary vanadium producer. Um, I guess that was in sort of 2007 to 2009. Uh, it was a little bit flat after the global financial crisis. You basically had CBMM ramping up their niobium. Uh, production to which is a, a substitute for vanadium in, in steels that depressed or held the price flat uh, for a number of years. I think what's behind the current vanadium surge is that there is definitely in China a push to the better quality uh, alloys, so increasing intensity of use of the vanadium, and that still is the primary use. Certainly, the vanadium redox batteries you need um, a higher spec vanadium than you do for the steel. So rather than the typical 98.5% V205 flake, you're probably looking at 99.5 or better, and you can command a premium. You can right. you can have a chat to the boys at Largo. I mean, they, they would be much better versed uh, than I in in, uh, in the vanadium market. Okay. I saw a uh, report of a speech given by Robert Friedland that he's calling for a 10 to 15 times win on vanadium over the next while. And of course, we can't define what while means, yeah. but it, it's not a decade out. It's uh, more imminent than that. Yeah, well, from, uh, from Bob's lips to God's ears. <laughs> and you can always trust a good boy from Canada, right? <laughs> Look, he's been, uh, he's been right more than he's been wrong. Let's and hope this is and another I tend example. To I agree with him on this one, which brings us then to the production out of Mount Marion. You have the good fortune, after having worked so hard for so long, to be in production, and you've given guidance to the market on, uh, is it earnings or cash flow or costs this year? Yeah, so we, we, put, out, uh, we put out our earnings. So, you know, we, we started commissioning Mount Marion at the start of the year. Um, in the first half of the calendar year, we produced 156,000 tonnes of concentrates, uh, the majority uh, was 6% LI2O concentrates. Uh, we're now running at steady state production. Um, we put uh, collectively the partners, Mineral Resources, Ganfeng and us, put earnings into the market, uh, Australian 72 million on a 100% basis for this current half. How did the market uh, respond to that? Oh, look, uh, all of us have had a, had a bit of a lift out of it, so that's been good. Um, our C1 costs are about US 290 a ton. All in costs delivered to China are around 360 a ton. Uh, but one has to remember there's uh, there's the capital recovery cost for the plant in there because mineral resources build it on a build own operate basis. We never we never put any capital into the plant. And I mean it's it's the world's largest lithium concentrator. It's twice as big as green bushes. Wow. So are you running at full capacity now? Uh, we are we are uh, running at nameplate capacity, correct. So nameplate's about 400,000 tonnes of concentrates per annum. And how long will you be able to run at that for? Uh, so we're putting through about 2.3 million tonnes of ore per annum. Uh, to get that, we've got about uh, a bit under 78 million tonnes of resource. So rough math is you're good for another 25 years. Uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be a long life. We have not published a reserve, but um, you know, notwithstanding that, it's a, it's a very robust ore body. So I was looking through the, uh, your uh, review of operations for the full year, and they're quite impressive. There's a really good map at page two uh, showing where the deposits are, the indicated, the inferred, and the unspecified. That was a very interesting map. Is there anything else you want to tell us today? Uh, look, you know, uh, for us, we're about building uh, a world-class integrated lithium producer. So we've got we've got our interest in Mount Marion. We can take our share of offtake from 2020 onwards. Uh, so basically, what we're doing is looking to to build a lithium hydroxide plant uh, in close proximity to the mine. Um, we're currently doing vendor test work uh, on runner mine concentrates. Uh, we'll have a very similar flow sheet to the Ganfeng boys. So they're taking, we, we've taken the risk out of the mine with mineral resources operating that. Uh, it's operating at steady state. The Ganfeng gentlemen have taken the risk out of the flow sheet because they're putting through 
uh, 100,000 tonnes a quarter of concentrates through that flow sheet. So we're doing vendor test work in Canada and the US. We'll get lump sum pricing uh, this quarter and update our models. We'll then look uh, subject to board approval uh, to move into the feed study, run uh, partner selection offtake process in parallel with that, uh, and hopefully get to consider a, a final investment decision in the December quarter of 2018. Uh, we've then allowed a, two, a comfortable two-year construction period and, and with an aim to start commissioning in 2021. So for us, it's it's migrating out of uh, out of the the mineral concentrate business into a lower cost lithium hydroxide business. I mean, we see the brine producers producing about 25% of lithium hydroxide. The Chinese guys about 75%, and that tail is getting longer. So we can migrate from higher up the cost curve to lower down the cost curve. Uh, and that's an important uh, important strategy. I think when markets are up, uh, you have to have a look at not, some, sometimes people are looking at just getting bigger in that stage without having You've got to, got work to, to each smarter, stage of right? production. Correct. Well, you should always, you, you know, while prices are high, you should be trying to get lower down the cost curve. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. I always learn something every time I talk to you, Chris. <laughs> no worries. You have, uh, you have a great night, Peter. Thanks. See you soon. 